from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Well, it's... Like Is 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. So baby wants steak. Baby gotta wait, because I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya. Lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Wanna get laid? Gotta be an auto. Oh. Spike, use Provolac. With Tabasco, hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Poon. Got to knock up, but you look in the switch. Pull a Hail Mary and jump that bitch. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Huh? Bye. Kiss 101. Bye. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Huh? Bye. Kiss 101. It's Like Is 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course. It teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Thank you so much for for coming into class once again. And uh, the attendance has been spectacular recently, and I like that. Uh, as you know, class, uh, our job here is to teach you about getting laid. A uh, number of people, uh, you know, I, I don't know if they're auditing the class, or they wander in the hallway uh, aimlessly, and they, they don't know what classroom they are in. Let's make sure that you understand what class this is. I mean, our job here is to teach guys how to get laid. That's our job. We're not here to teach people how to get married, how to have a successful marriage, how to have a successful relationship, how to keep marriages together. Uh, we're not here to teach you that. Your professor is opposed to marriage, opposed to living together. Your professor wants you to get laid as often as you possibly can. Uh, while at the same time spending as little time, energy, or money as is necessary to get the job done. That is what we are here for. We get calls from people all the time who are asking for marital advice. Don't call here. I've been divorced repeatedly. I'm the wrong guy to ask. Don't call here. People call me for relationship advice. Are you kidding me? My advice is get out of the relationship. That's my advice. Marital advice, same thing. Get out. Get out while you still can. The basics of this course are the purpose of dating is to get laid. There is no other reason to be on a date except to get laid. It's that simple. If you have a date planned for this weekend, and you are not certain that your agenda is to get laid, I say cancel it now and give it some thought. Cancel that date right now. you got to be kidding me. Get out. Don't do it. I'm dead serious. Dating is not so you can, uh, you know, get to know somebody or make a new friend. Dating is not so you can uh, go out to Starbucks or the coffee bean and uh, try their newest flavors. Dating is not an opportunity to see the newest foreign film or go to a restaurant or spend $300. That's not the purpose of dating. Where do we get so screwed up in this society? The purpose of dating is to get laid. That's the purpose. What are we doing? How did we get so screwed up? Like as one of one students do not spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. 
We just don't. A chick decides before she ever gets out the door with you whether or not she's going to give it to you at the end of the night. It doesn't matter how much lobster you buy her, how much champagne. doesn't matter if you rent a limo or get her flowers. None of that is going to make any difference at all. In fact, I say the more you spend, the less likely it is you're going to get late. It isn't spending money that gets you chicks. It's having money or making a chick think you've got the potential to make money. You don't even have to have actual money. If she thinks you've got it or she thinks you have the potential to earn it, that's all that matters. You know, it's uh, just as good to be a pre-med student or a pre-law student. It's just as good to be somebody who's... uh, uh, preparing to study to be an architect. I mean, it's just good to have potential as something professional. Even if she's never going to get her hands on the money. And you don't want her getting her hands on the money. In this classroom, I'm reminding you, you're not looking to move in with anybody. You're not looking to have joint bank accounts or have babies or stay overnight spooning, hugging, caressing. Your idea is to get laid and get the hell out of there. So many of you boys have been raised by single mothers. You're a bunch of pussy-whipped, pathetic individuals. If you had a dad around kicking your ass, he'd tell you, get in, get out, hit it and quit it, pump it and dump it. This idea that you should be spending all this money, are you kidding me? And now, by the way, boys, don't forget in just, uh, it's next month. What are we, six weeks away or something from Thanksgiving? If you are banging somebody, the time to duck out will be in advance of Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, and extend that all the way up to Valentine's Day. You want to be scarce during that period of time. You don't want to be taking her out for her birthday. You don't want to be meeting her relatives. You don't want her meeting your friends or your family. You just want to get laid. If you're looking to fall in love or you're looking to get married at 19 or whatever, this is the wrong class for you. Really, seriously, you shouldn't be here. The reason to be here is because I'm here to teach you how to get laid for the least amount of money, the least amount of effort spent. Our students don't date single mothers because we don't want to spend money on you and your little crumb crunchers. We have no interest. And eventually it gets down to spending money, whether it's helping you pay the rent or eventually going on dates that end up being, uh, you know, like uh, Shrek 3 or other, uh, you know, Shrek 3rd or whatever. The idea is eventually you start going to movies that appeal to kids, restaurants that appeal to kids. Then you start taking vacations and you go on places where where kids want to go. Crappy hotels with swimming pools or whatever. I mean, please. Boys. You're going to live, the life expectancy of the male is has been extended to 82 years old now in the United States. 82. Cancer rates are dropping at a precipitous rate. Do you know about this? The rate of cancer is dropping at the highest, it's dropping faster than ever before. That means you're all going to live longer than you thought you were. And that means, boys, listen carefully. There's no rush to get married. There's no rush to have children. There's no, you you don't have a biological time clock. You can have kids at 50, 55, 60 and still see them graduate high school. There is no rush. No rush. You boys disappoint me when you're, uh, you know, rushing to get into something. I don't like it. So if you are looking to get late, If you are looking to spend the least amount of time, money, and energy on bitches who don't put out and aren't going to give you what you need, this is the class for you. I am here to help you avoid relationships, avoid commitment, avoid marriage, because you want to do that for as long as you possibly can. If you need help in this area, your professor is here for you. If you are one of the broads who disagrees with your professor, I welcome a vigorous classroom discussion. Now, all you have to do is participate. Tom, Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM.
the more you educate our men, you're pretty much screwing me over. I mean, I love going out and not taking a penny, just my ID. I mean, come on, cut me some slack. Give a dog a bone. <laughs> I'll give you a bone. It's Like It's 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's Like It's 101 with your professor at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number, John. I like it's one on one. Hello. 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 What's up, Tom? Uh, the ratings, matter of fact. Uh, that's cool, man. Yeah, so uh, so I called because of a little predicament I'm in. Okay. Okay. I got a situation. I I met this girl, right? Right. She was, uh, she's, I fu- she's a little older than me, you know, I'm 22, she's 30. And, uh, she's in, I come to find out, you know, she's on a furlough from a rehab when I met her. What kind of rehab? Drug rehab. What kind of drugs? Meth. Uh-huh. Crystal meth. That's great. Yeah. So, she has a 10-year-old kid. Ah, uh, strike two. Huh? Strike two. Yeah. And uh, I think she wants a relationship with me. I'm sure she wants a relationship with any man who will have a relationship with her. Yeah, I, I think that's what the case She's is. not that discriminating. Yeah. Yeah, so 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 what do you think about the whole situation? Yeah, you know what I think about this situation. You, are you a new uh, student? Uh, yes, I am. So did you need to call in to ask me that, or do you know my answer to that? Well, I know. But, uh, so why did you have to call in? Well, because I needed a I needed a cosigner. But and you I already figured... you already know what I think. Yeah, that's true. All right, Tom. Thanks. I mean, I mean, is there even a question? No, it's really not. I mean, what's the upside of this? Vagina. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, guess what? Uh, who do you do you even know who she's? been with? She's a meth user who's been through rehab? Yeah, this is true. I mean, who else has been there? I don't know. Uh-huh. And uh, clearly if she got knocked up, that means she rides bareback a lot. This is true. Right? Right. God only knows what's growing in there. This is true as well. Yeah, okay. But uh, but, but, but uh, the little, the little uh, the thought uh, would go into it from you, would it? The what? You wouldn't think about that at all or give that any thought, would you? Well, I am now. Thanks. You needed yeah. to call me to be reminded of that? Yeah. Don't you think that just the fact that somebody get out of rehab, that, that they're pretty scuzzy as it is? This is true as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you really need that? And then they have a baby? By the way, where'd the baby, baby go? Where'd the baby go? Oh, Ten years old? Yeah. Where was the baby while she was in rehab? Uh, with her. The baby was in rehab, too. Yeah, it's like a women and children thing, I guess. Really? Yeah. I, I don't even think she should be allowed to have the baby, uh, a 10-year-old, with her if she's doing crystal meth. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I know what you're saying. But you looked uh, into those eyes and saw lust. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah, well, give it up. All right. All right, man. Well, thanks for the advice. Thank you. Byron on Likus 101, hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How you doing? Great. So, uh, I got, uh, I need your advice. Yes. So I've been trying to, I've been trying to nail this girl, right, for a while, huh? Right. And, you know, we've hooked up a couple times, but I know dating equals porking, you know? Yes. But she's, she's just. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So she flirted on me last week, and now she's inviting me out with her friends. Like no, no, Saturday you never night. go out, never, ever go out with the friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I was kind of feeling that. You never so, go out with the friends, ever. Why is that? You don't even want to meet the friend because the purpose of seeing her is to get laid. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah. Not to have a relationship, not to have her friends cackling about uh, something, you know, about what you look like or about your ability in the bedroom, whatever it is women love to cackle about. Yeah. You are not opening yourself up to that criticism. And by the way, if her friends don't like you, there's the possibility she'd dump you. Right. Why would you give her the opportunity to do that? No, that's what I was thinking. I just wanted to, you know, hear you say it. That's the reason. No, you don't ever want to meet her friends or family. So how do I play it? Do I try and schedule another date and get her to, you know, go out alone with me and then get her to my house? Well, watch your mouth. We're on the air. What's that? You can't use that word on the air. I'm sorry. Sorry, Tom. Tom? Yeah. Sorry. Excuse me. Every call now is doing this. I'm sorry about that. So, what do you think I should do? Well, first of all, you don't want her at your place. That's your. That's the last resort. Well, that's where, you know, I'm going to nail her. Why can't you nail her at her place? Uh, I think she's got a roommate. Do you know she has a roommate? Yeah, I do know she has a roommate. And does the roommate ever go out on Friday night or Saturday night or Sunday? Or? I, I don't know. I mean, how do you find all that out you just ask her you're just like hey well put it this way you, you just want to come to her place do you care if a roommate is there in the other room who cares what would you do if a girl flaked on you like that would you I, just, w- I would be done with her you'd write her off yes i would okay nobody flakes on me you flake on me one time and that's that right okay. but, but that's me well I mean, I see what you're saying. Depends on how desperate you are. Right. So if you're really desperate, I guess you'll tolerate that. Well, what if it's just you really want to you really want to uh, nail this one girl? I don't want to really nail anybody. If I have other options, I don't really want to nail anybody who flakes on me. Okay. I want to be shown respect. Okay. Sounds like sounds like good advice. I'll, okay, I'll take your advice. I'll just. I I'll feel just, better uh, getting respect. By the way, she's showing how little respect for you she has a second time because first she flakes on you, then the next date is come out with my friends where you're guaranteed not to get laid. Guaranteed, huh? Guaranteed not to get laid. Okay. Well then, I mean, you pretty much cleared it up for me there. I mean, when they take you out with the friends, the agenda is not sex. I'll just have to forgo my desires and... She will let the friends weigh in on you. And uh, clip her. They will head to the ladies' room and discuss you. Right, and bring her other boyfriends and flirt with them in front of me and flame, right? No, the point is, who? what are the guys are going on this date? I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying it's like a party, but I, I've seen that before where girls will no, do no. that. No, no. Parties take place at someone's home, okay? okay this, is, this is a birthday party at a bar. No, that's that's that that's people going out to a bar. Okay. And by the way, they need at least one or two guys there to pay for all the drinks, and I'm sure you'd be used for that too. Uh, no, actually, I wouldn't do that because that's that's against your rules. But that's uh, you want to know why you're being invited? I'm telling you. Okay. You want her alone <laughs> in a situation you control. Right. Okay, that sounds. Sounds. I mean, I but, but, but by the way, like by, well, if she flaked on me, I, I wouldn't care about getting her alone again. I'd be done. Yeah, just don't even call her back. No. Okay. Move Thank on. You. Thank you. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Trish on like us one hundred one. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How you doing? Great. Cool. We listen to you all the time. I can't say I always agree with you, but we listen to you. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I am such in a disagreement with you about the rehab chick. Women go through addiction. They go through rehab. That's not our problem. They recovery, and they do recover. That's not our problem. Once again, become uh, and they fall people. and and they fall off the wagon. It's not our problem helping you recover. No, it's not your problem. It's our problem. It's any addiction, any addict's problem to right. get through it. If you have that I baggage, I don't want any part of it. That's cool, but but we become responsible citizens of great of, 
of everything. So why can't we have that? Well, you can have whatever you want, but you're not going to get it with me or my students. <laughs> so every man in America is your student? I didn't say that. That's my point. Every man isn't. But if a man is a if a man is a if a man is a one on one student, he doesn't want any part of baggage. No baggage. So it, once you become an addict, rather you recover and you become responsible. Well, citizens, they will tell you. By the way, in every twelve step program, once an addict, always an addict. They will tell you that. That's right. Once a pickle, always a pickle. That's right. So therefore, you don't stop being an addict. But we recover. We are in recovery. No, I'm no, sorry. no. Because but you well. never, but you never recover. That's my point. If you're always in recovery, then you never recover. Okay. Well, I can't really. Well, I don't know. I don't. I don't. By definition, right? If you're still recovering, you haven't recovered yet. But you never recover, and yet That's you are correct about that. You my never point. Recover. So, so I'll I'll leave that problem with somebody else. Thank you very much, because you might fall off the wagon, and I don't want to have to be called out in the middle of the night or having to leave work to to to, to scoop you up off the street or wherever you're tweaking or whatever you're doing. Oh, I agree with that one. I don't want any part of it. I don't want any part of the dishonesty that drug users uh, engage in. I don't want it. Okay. So, but. There are some of us, and, and please, I just want to—I just want the credit. There are some women and men that do that do the program correctly, uh, or go through it honestly. I don't want. Make, you know what? I don't want to have to deal with the alarm going off at seven a.m. so you can go to your seven thirty a.m. twelve step meeting. I don't want any. I don't want any of the disadvantages or the problems that are attendant to that. That well, that's that's your choice. That's your yes, option. it is, and I recommend to the guys out there the same thing. But what happens if they fall in love with with a with a, a recoverer, uh, if or they, recovering if, person? If they decide to avoid those people, they won't fall in love with them. But you can't avoid everybody, every addict. The word, I, I'm not proud of it, I, but they're everywhere. Uh, they're everywhere. not. They're not everywhere because if they were everywhere, that would mean 100 percent of the people who are addicts. Okay, there's... I'm not an addict. <laughs> You're not? Never? No. Good. Good for you. I'm no happy. rehab. I never even smoked cigarettes. No. Woo. That's, I... a, that's, an accompli- that's great. I, I don't think it's an accomplishment. Me. You know what? <laughs> uh, it's the way things should be. No, you can't say it's the way things yes, should be. Yes, it is the way things should be. And if I'm ever going to be with anybody, it's going to be with someone else who feels the same way I do. Okay, I'll give you that one. But still, I want you to understand that people go through recovery, through rehab, and they recover. They have once again become responsible citizens. I, I don't. I bet you never know which ones are going to be those and which ones are going to be Britney Spears. You don't know. And therefore, I'm not going to spin the Wheel of Fortune with you or people like you. Okay. But there are, like myself... I don't... Again, it is a matter of a roll of the dice, a spin of the wheel, and I don't choose to run my life that way. Hey, Tom, shut up. Oh, all right. I don't want to take the chance that you're not going to be one of them. Well... We're still good people. We're still I don't know. I, man, by the way, my, my, my family had 18 first cousins, and I will tell you uh, that drug addicts are the most dishonest individuals in the world, and I detest them for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, and I agree with the, what, you, what you're talking about, but I don't agree with you telling them not to, to even give no. Recover, no. recovery a chance. No, no, no. Let somebody else have that problem. Let somebody else who's not... Uh, a, a one-on-one student. Somebody else doesn't have the benefit of this class. Let okay, them. What about let them. Students that are at, that are recovering addicts. Uh, well, again, I'm not. T- that's their. Pro- I still don't think they should get with other addicts. My boyfriend was in. Uh, we went through addiction and recovery together, and we're doing great. We have actually pulled ourselves out. We bought a vehicle. Well, we that's house, you. you know? But that's you. But there's also many people who meet in rehab and then drag each other down into the quicksand. Oh, yeah. That's true. Them relapses are slippery as hell. Right. And they're, But why would I want to get in anywhere near that? It has been such a joy talking to you. I can't believe I can't stand some of the things you talk about. But I, I listen all the time. Well, all the time. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, dear. Thank you.
One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Jai on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. I got a question, man. Um, when I know your rules, you know, if a chick picks up the phone and it's like, you know, hey, you excuse yourself and you abandon that bitch. Yes. No problem. But what do you say when that chick calls back? Like she's like, oh my god, you left me. What do you tell that bitch? I don't talk to her. I'm probably hey, sorry about that. Another one. Work. Every call now. Every call curses everybody. One hundred percent of them. No. Yes. I just say, uh, I have nothing to say. I don't take the call. You know, caller ID is a great thing. That it is. If you disrespect me and take a phone call while I'm out on a date with you, you don't deserve an explanation. See ya. Pure genius, Tom. Pure genius. That is why we love you, man. Yo, can you take me out Kobe style, Tom? Of course I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Hey, Sassy, you're really cooking tonight. I'm cooking with gas, baby. <laughs> right on. It's the Tom Likas Show. Our telephone number. I am your professor. It's Derek on the Tom Langer Show. Hello. Hi. Hey, just, just wanted to kind of go over something. I've been listening to you for a little bit, and it seems to me that as far as dating is concerned, you've put forth this equation that to me just doesn't add up. I'm sure that you would advocate that your boys, you know, date attractive, hot women, yet we're not supposed to. Uh, you know, meet their friends, meet their family. They're really not supposed to come back to our place. We're not supposed, supposed to spend any money on them. So what's in it for them? It just doesn't seem like the equation adds up. I By mean, the time they figure that out, you've moved on to the next victim. You're pumping and dumping. But it seems like, you know, it's then just a, a numbers game, and I don't see how the average fellow would meet, you know, 10,000 women where one out of 10,000 that was attractive. That you don't have to have 10,000. The other possibility is that you would have a bullpen of women that you call upon when you need them, and that's it. You don't see them the rest of the time. Yeah, I guess I just don't have a big enough bullpen. <laughs> well, you need to start, uh, maybe I need to scout the Dominican Republic or something like the Major Leagues. That sounds like a good plan. So where would you recommend, of all the uh, forums for meeting people... I know I that's a place I'd be them. scouting. What's well, that? Never mind. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, I'm, I'm not big on going to bars or clubs. I'm just curious. Where would you recommend a single guy? Where is, like, a, a high-prospect-rich environment to uh, to play the numbers game? In well, I, you, 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 live in, you, live in or, you live in Orange County? I live in Huntington Beach. All right. So there's a lot of hot chicks in the HB. There's a lot of them. Tons. And, yes. and so what you need to do is to do the things that you enjoy, but preferably things that guys with money do. Uh, do you own a boat? Uh, no. Do you? I surf. I go to the beach a lot. I surf. I dive a little. All right. But uh, I, I put it this way. I think that uh, any boating organizations, they are just replete with women who are looking to meet guys with money. Right. And I think that's a good place to find them. Uh, maybe you just want to learn how to sail, for example. Okay, that, that sounds more like something that, uh, I don't know, I'm hearing a different side of Tom. I don't know. Every time I hear you, sometimes, you know, it seems like some of the people that call your show, I hate to say it, but seem to have a lesser intelligence, and they need to temper the way they see things with the way you've seen things because you've been around a while and you know how these women are. But there's other people maybe where it just you, you seem like such an extremist and I don't know. I give people a, advice that's appropriate to them. 
I think that's true. And it just seems... And I'm giving you advice that's appropriate to you. Get into something that uh, has to do with... By the way, in Los Angeles, I can't speak for Orange County because I, I don't live in Orange County. I only visit... Uh, but in Los Angeles, uh, we've got uh, the L.A. County Museum, uh, the LACMA, or the Museum of Contemporary Art. Uh, they all have memberships, and many of them now have social events at night. They're teeming with women, looking because, again, they think they're going to meet sophisticated guys, or they don't like bars, or they think they're going to meet guys with money. And uh, you join these organizations. I happen to be a member of LACMA. Well, see, that all sounds like pretty healthy stuff. You, well, I didn't you, expect that. Well, I'm, I'm telling you how to do what you want to do. You asked a specific question. I know how, the, how to answer it because uh, guess what? I'm a member of the museum. I have been to events. They have the, the organization called Muse where they have nighttime events with booze and the museum is open late at night with previews of upcoming exhibits and uh, there's like a DJ and there's chicks galore. Well, I'll have to look into that. That sounds like a good uh, approach. One other thing, it seems like almost everybody that calls to ever disagree with you, so to speak, you're able to uh, get them to start saying, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, in about 30 seconds, and it cracks me up every damn time. Oh, I like that. Well, uh, listen, I really appreciate you taking my call, and uh, I'll keep listening to you. You know, times, sometimes the, the stuff you say, you know, seems to great the years for whatever reason. I am one of those people that fell into love, thought it was love, had a kid, and uh, I'm divorced and a single parent. And I'm telling you guys, wear a hat, wear a party hat. Right. Don't be stupid. That's right. All right, sir. Well, have a great evening. You too. Appreciate the call. So. Where do you think I was going to tell him to go? To a hooker? <laughs> I'm tired of bars. How about a hooker? How about a brothel? <laughs> Come on. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Like Us 101. I'm here to teach you boys how to get laid with a minimum of money, effort, and time. Adam, hello. Tom, what's going on, buddy? I love the show. Thank you, Adam. All right, Tom. I I severely have a problem. And just hear me out for a second. I, uh, I have a girl, and I've been with her for a year. She's 19. How old I'm are you? Uh, Tom, I'm 22. Strike one. Strike one. All right. Uh, currently, I am going to school up in Stanford, so I don't have time. I don't have time to really check. Oh, I, I'm studying a lot of time. I don't have time to check really what she's into. Last week. Wait, you, you're at Stanford? Yeah, up in this, San Francisco. Yeah, I, right know, I, I know where Stanford is. So you have a long-distance relationship. Exactly. Strike two. Okay, go ahead. All right, man. So I, I see where I'm going with this. But it, so she accused me last. I have a fake account set up for it because two broads have done this to me before. And I've been actually a faithful guy. I've actually been a good man with her because I care about her a little bit. And so I said, you know, I'll give her a shot. So but you I live think, in the Bay Area without getting late. No, but you just said you're 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 trustworthy. Right. I, I'm trustworthy with her. And I don't I. I She's a fun girl to be around. Put but, it but you so. don't get laid when you're in San Francisco, do you? No. Great. Strike three. All right. And the, the problem is, you know, I set up an account with her, and I a fake account, and she accused me last weekend. Of what do you mean? You, what, what do you mean? I don't understand what you mean. You set up a fake account. Yeah, what kind like of fake? fake account? I had like 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 a fake like uh, I work with computers, so I basically had a fake setting. It had fake emails. Um, it had fake uh, AIM names, all this stuff, and she accused me of talking to girls, and I called her out, and I said, oh, yeah, and I, I pulled up the fake account and called her out on it, and she told me, you know, all right, well, I just wanted to see if you were talking to girls. This is the thing. I think she has been basically screwing around with me with another guy. That's that what is, happens when you have a long-distance yeah. relationship, Junior. I can drop her. That's not the thing. I just want to be able to call her out on it. I Why do you care? Just me. move on. Yeah, all right. Just yeah, Stop sure. with revenge. You know what? Yeah, You know why you want revenge? Because you were stupid. You thought yeah, there I was know. such a thing as a long-distance relationship, which there isn't. Uh, well, certainly right. not a monogamous one. At, at least one, if not both people in most long-distance relationships are getting laid by somebody else. People don't do what you do, move to San Francisco and not get laid. Do you know how many hot chicks are in the Bay Area? Are you kidding me? That is true. I guess you know what? I, I, like I, an idiot, you sit there. I know. Oh, I miss my girlfriend. She's out banging somebody else, laughing at you. Right. Stupid. You're a little boy. 
man, for all this broad, it's just, I know, I understand. It just sucks because I just don't have time to really go out that much is the thing. And, you know, but what, what the point I, is, the point is you can't go out with her because she lives 500 miles away. I guess I just, you know, I got involved with her. I guess I just cared about her somewhat. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I couldn't help that, Tom. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you could. Can... You know what? I can help it. You can help it. I mean, it's like now she already has a part of me. It sucks. Well, you gave it away. Yeah. Foolishly. Uh, I'm lost right now. I... You should have just realized that once you move out of town, there's no way to have a monogamous relationship. So what you should have had is friends with benefits. When you come to SoCal to visit, you, you nail her, and then you go back up there and you nail the other chicks you're nailing. Now, that's what an adult would do. Yeah, I hear you on that one, Tom. I, I just, I guess, you know, I dropped, I laid my head low for a second and look what happened, so. But the point is, you you know, again, if you were an adult, you would know this. I'm trying, Tom. I, I You know, the truth is I really am. I'm fully, I, I've i been listening every day, and I and I knew it was going to come down to this. I knew you said, I said, you know, so you're going to sit here and you're going to, she's going to catch you. You know, you're going to get foot caught in the door. Just get out while you can, and now it's too late, and I'm just an idiot, exactly like you said. I mean, the point is, you you could have you could have had a sexual relationship with her when you're in town. Probably healthy too. Yeah. It is not realistic to have a relationship with someone who lives 500 miles away. You care about him. Well, exactly. it's only yeah, like yeah. caring about her. I mean, she doesn't care about you. And this is all about you being all alone in San Francisco. Mom and dad aren't there and your girlfriend's not there. So so you need to have a girlfriend, just like these morons in the military who get married to some uh, screw around, F around before they go off to Iraq and Afghanistan and get their hearts broken. Well, Tom, I just want to let you know I'm not that bad. I don't want you thinking, or I know it's not that big of a deal, but I don't want you thinking I'm, I'm that bad already. I mean, I'm going to fix this problem. I know that much. Fix it. Just like you said, goodbye, so. Done. All right, Tom, I, I appreciate it, man. I love the show, and you're a great man. Thank you for that. David, I hear the radio. I'm sorry about that, Tom. It's off. Yes. What it's can off. I do for you? First off, hello, Father. How are you? Son, I'm doing fine. Well, you're going to be a little upset at me, Father. Why? All right. Well, this is my situation. Um, but a couple months ago, um, you know, I was living a good life, living the Tom Likas life, you know, doing this, doing that, and uh, met up, met up, met a girl. She was real good and everything. We were, you know, I was, I was hitting and quitting it, you know, it was that kind of thing. And she was, she was in the bullpen, you know. But for some reason, man, she became a starter. And how did that, how did that happen? I don't know how it happened. No, no, no. You did it. So tell us how it happened. Well, basically, she moved in with me. No, no. You let her move in with you. Why? Uh, you you did it. Why did you do it? Well, first off, I, you know, I did it because, I guess, because I started falling for the girl. Oh. I started really having feelings for her. And oh. I know, I know, Tom, I know, I know. I'm a pussy. I know. But, you know, I started having feelings for the girl, and, you know, I said, okay, I'm going to help her out. And um, she moved in, right? As soon as she moved in, man, she started proclaiming it her house and her home and doing different things and you got what you deserve you got what you deserved i'm laughing my ass off over here i know you are tom i know you are and and i followed your rules for the longest you know yeah, and, but didn't i what you know, did i warn you about this you did you and, and you this. thought you knew more than i did didn't you well tom she told me it's like she told me she was pregnant and you know she told me she got pregnant and, and you stayed with her anyway Excuse me. No, well, come, you know, she told me she was pregnant to the doctor and everything. And, you know, she would hide, like, you know, the, she would always tell me, no, you know, I'll go by myself. You don't have to come with me. And it turns out that she wasn't pregnant at all. Yep. And so, I mean, she got me, man, hook, hook and sinker. Why are you still there? I don't, because it's my apartment. Yeah, when is your lease up? Um, in about, like, four months. All right, start planning on your move. 
But you don't think you don't think that I should like kind of just just like get rid of her? Or... Turn the utilities off. You, t- <laughs> you don't laugh at me. I'm, I'm laughing at myself because I, I'm gonna tell you why I'm laughing. No, we don't have time for that. Just turn the goddamn utilities off. The Tom Likas Show.